Welcome to another insightful episode of MTV Seeds of Gold, where we uncover remarkable stories of agriculture success. Today, join us in Magere, Wakisa District, where we explore the thriving Nisindi poultry farm. We meet Pastor Julius Raymond Kabugo, a humble servant of God, affiliated to the Worship Harvest Ministries and a rather extraordinary poultry farm. Now his farm, Nisindi Poultry Farm, which began five years ago with 2,000 birds, has grown to an impressive 5,200 birds, focusing primarily on layers. And we started five years ago, approximately, with 200 birds, but by the grace of God, we have now grown to 5,200 birds. Uh, our business is focusing on a lot of things. Of course, the first one, the core, is producing eggs for our customers, who are mainly supermarkets right now, we have one of the biggest supermarkets in the country that we supply eggs uh, on, a, on, on a daily basis. At the same time, we have other businesses, bakers. Despite the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic, Pastor Julius' dedication sustained the firm, which only saw steady growth, inspired and supported fellow farmers in the region. One farmer who struggled for a decade with poultry now thrives with the help of Misinji Poultry Farm's guidance. The COVID season where we had a lockdown, the price of eggs went below the production price uh, or even costs. But still, we persevered and we've grown to now big numbers. And along the way, we have helped so many other farmers to be successful. We have a farmer who had tried out poultry management for 10 years and she failed. Uh, and when she met us two years ago, we worked with her on a journey to understand how you build a successful poultry business. Right about this time, she has 1,370 birds, and then she's producing around 40 trays per day. Misinji Poultry Farm goes beyond egg production, from producing energy with biogas to quickening manure processing with solar dryers. We are also uh, focusing on producing energy, which is biogas, of course, for us, for our farm, especially during brooding. By the same time, we have a vision of packing this gas and sell it out to homes so that we can shift from using the gas that people use, uh, petroleum, to now using biogas that is being manufactured out of uh, manure. The other thing we do, we produce manure for farmers especially those guys that are dealing in horticulture and, and even coffee. So we do produce this using technologies like solar dryers and on a daily we make, make it available and then we sell it to them to increase their crop you know, uh, production. This farm clearly excels in managing the entire poultry value chain as they also supply high quality feeds to local farmers. One of the challenges that farmers face is the feed they give to their birds. You find that a farmer is very motivated, is very ready, is very positioned to run a successful business. Unfortunately, things like inputs, which is feed and others, limit them. If you get bad or poor feed, you find that your business is going to be affected uh, to um, run or rather to survive. We came up and decided to take care of this challenge of making sure that they are high quality feeds uh, for our farmers in the country. It is still not a very big business for now because of the capacity, but it is growing gradually. We are using local inputs, maize, uh, maize bran, uh, fish, uh, soya beans, and, and others that everyone is using. Now, the difference is not in what you use. The difference is in the process of producing them and the managing of inputs. Because some people buy maize, from areas perhaps where this maize has not been prepared well because you need to understand what is quality maize, what is quality soya beans, what is quality maize brand. In other words, you need to manage uh, your supply chain of inputs very well. Have reliable customers or reliable supply of inputs who you clearly define what is the high quality, what is a good product that you're going to use to produce the feed. And that's what makes the difference. The other thing is making sure that you provide 
uh, adequate quantities. Because sometimes instead of putting, let's say, 100 kilograms of maize, some producers choose to cheat on the process to maybe put much less. And then when you give such feed to the birds, you realize that they take longer to grow and ultimately get into production, which is taking away would be profit uh, from the farmer. And these are some of the challenges that we are trying to solve. And what motivated us to actually get into this is the challenges we faced when we started five years ago. We realized that some of the feed we are getting was not good. Sometimes you bring them to the farm and the birds are not growing well. One of the farm's remarkable achievements is the absence of significant disease outbreaks, a clear depiction of the meticulous management of process. In fact, as far as I remember, we have not had a disease outbreak on this farm over the last three and a half years. Remember, we are five years. And what's the difference is how we manage our preventive system of diseases through vaccination, uh, through managing who comes to the farm, uh, through uh, fumigation, and all those other things which would attract diseases to the farm. And now we've shared all this information to the, especially the family of farmers that we have uh, to make sure that they do the same. And as a result, we are observing that they are also managed to prevent diseases of their farm, which has increased their profitability. Now, when there's a disease outbreak at the farm, there are two bad things that happen. The first one, you have to invest in drugs to medicate the birds. But now the other one is that when the birds are sick, they don't lay eggs. So you're losing money through reduced production, and yet you're putting in money to get the birds back to good health. You know? So the best strategy is to make sure that you prevent diseases, which we've been very you know, uh, successful at. Partnerships have played a crucial role in securing funds for waste management, enabling Msinji to extend a helping hand to other farmers. Uh, along the way, we are getting partners on board to support our initiative of especially helping other farmers register success uh, with uh, uh, their farming, their uh, poultry production. We're currently running a project uh, on waste management for effective or efficient poultry production. Uh, in Kampara, Wakiso, and Mukono. And this project is being funded by Abi, Abi Trust. Uh, they have given us money to construct biogas digesters for farmers and um, solar dryers for management of waste. When you go to so many farms, especially poultry farms, you'll find out that what actually gets you to those farms is a smell. As soon as you get into the community, you'll know there's a poultry farm somewhere because of the smell. Now, what we have done successfully at this farm and all the farms that we are supporting is to manage that problem of waste management through converting uh, the manure or the droppings uh, into gas and the dry manure which is sold to other farmers for use uh, in their crops. Pastor Julius confidently affirms the profitability of the business, citing growth and a promising future. Many people ask questions like, is this business profitable? Is this a good business? My answer is a simple yes, because if it wasn't profitable, wouldn't be here. If it wasn't profitable, wouldn't have grown from 2,200 birds to now 5,200 birds. Uh, we estimate that by the close of next year, we will actually have over 10,000 birds. And of course, as we move into other years, we are going to keep on growing and growing and growing. Currently, we are employing over 10 staff, uh, and, and uh, one of our staff actually has a master's degree. So if you can employ such a caliber of individual with that kind of qualification, that tells you that this is a viable business. Uh, we have guys with bachelor's degrees and all sorts of qualifications, and we have never failed to pay their salaries. And this money is not coming from our pockets, but it's coming from the business. He emphasizes the importance of building a robust system, employing the right people, paying taxes, and effective leadership. We pay taxes with URA, we pay their NSSF uh, every month, it is profitable, but of course, you have to do the right things. The right things are lead your business well, build your systems, build your structures, be professional, separate yourself from your business and let it run. But above everything, have a great vision, know where you're going, don't build a business for yourself, build it for others, build it for the future. And of course, lead people well. It's very, very important. Your staff relate with your partners, that's how you can attract people who can put money in your business, relate with your customers, and above everything, manage your money well. When money comes in, don't buy cars, 
you want to go for holidays, let the money run into your business. Well, now, when the business grows and perhaps can pay you some money in dividends, then you can use that to eventually do what you want on your own. But for now, let the business run and run professionally. So why the focus on layers? Well, Julius explains the strategic decision to master and succeed in layers before venturing into brainers. Our business is going to do all other buzz, including um, broilers. But the model we are using, we are going to use for broilers different. So when we started, we thought it important to first master and be successful at one of them, which is layers. So it was just a decision of management of us to start with them. And as you can see, we've now been successful, yeah? Uh, to the extent that we've managed to um, extend our systems or pass them on to other farmers and it's working very very well now our next stage is to actually now move to uh, broilers with a contract to supply chicken meat Msinji poultry farm is mobilizing other farmers to benefit from the available market as I talk right now we already have a contract to supply meat chicken meat already but we are not producing anything yet so we are mobilizing farmers because the model is going to be different. We are going to work with people. We have so far recruited around 50 women who we are going to train, keep these birds in their respective spaces. For that's what we are going to do. We are going to supply them everything. Get them the chicks, get them the feed, teach them, advise them on what kind of vaccines they are going to use, uh, help them build a system, literally guide them. So at the end of the process, we're going to buy all those birds from them and then we supply the market that we have. It's going to be a very big project. Uh, we're going to implement a model called contract financing. So we'll take a short commercial break. The building section powered by eco-friendly biogas, showcases the farm's commitment to nurturing the environment. From sourcing quality chicks to maintaining an automated system, Misinji Poultry Farm sets the standard for excellence. So what we have done differently is to identify a good source of these chicks, whereby they are hatched well, they are vaccinated very well at birth, at the point when they reach our farms. Then secondly, when they are here, we make sure that we follow the schedule of vaccination to avoid any diseases to uh, attack them. The other thing is the feed that we give them, which we do produce ourselves. We've made sure that there is no compromise on the quality of their feed, so they grow really well. And of course, the most importantly one, or rather the most one that is helping us a lot, is that uh, we have automated our brooding uh, system. When you go in there, you'll find that the birds are, in, are caged from day one, we put them in, in a cage with a certain degree of care. Uh, they access water well. Uh, they, are, they are far away from, from their droppings. They don't mix with the dirt, which could perhaps get them to fall sick. They feed well. They have all the adequacies that they need. But also, we've, we have attendants. That is our staff who keep with them 24-7 in shifts to make sure that they have what they need to grow well. We're now starting to see, or we usually see, that their production is very, very good because the early stages have been managed incredibly well. So we do brood for ourselves, but also we brood for farmers, those who are interested. Navigating challenges, especially with people management, has been a learning curve for Julius. By focusing on character rather than just skill, he turns staffing challenges into opportunities for growth. The only challenge I think any business is going to face is the people usually staff, because all the challenges you're going to have at your farm, they're going to be created by the people. Either staff are going to steal uh, the eggs, or they're going not to do the things that you've told them to do, uh, or some may not have the skills required to manage certain processes, because your staff are a function of you. If your staff are not doing their work right, you are the problem, they're not the problem. So one of the things personally I have decided to uh, focus on is the art of leading people. And what I do, I have to improve myself all the time. 
read about leadership and then lead my people well. And leading people starts with so many other things. The first one, you must identify the good people. Okay? You must look for the good people. Don't recruit skill. Don't recruit competences. Look root character. Someone who is, whose integrity is okay. Someone who can function in a team. Someone who is willing to grow. Someone who takes instructions. Now, when they come to you as a leader, if you're a good leader, then you can give them the skills through trainings. Lack of a vision is also highlighted as a common challenge among farmers. Because some people build businesses to survive. Others build businesses to pay school fees. Others build businesses to buy food. That's not a bad thing, okay? But when you build a business to take care of a problem, one specific problem, the moment you realize that um, that problem has not been solved, you quit. Other people don't know how to manage money, especially in this business where you earn money every day. As soon as they get the money from wherever they have sold the eggs, they are going to the beach. And especially some of, some of our friends who, who, who drink, they want to spend nights in bars. Now, they realize the following day, they need to buy feed, but the money has been spent on certain things. Then the business is starting to struggle. The other day, the workers should be paid. Now they can't pay them, then the workers are leaving. For as a matter of fact, for us, we pay our workers by the 20th of the month. The greatest achievement for Julius is the positive impact on people's lives, as evidenced by his staff's ability to support their families and invest in personal growth. My greatest achievement is the number of people I've employed. Um, I am sincerely grateful to God that uh, over 10 people come here every morning to work and then earn a living, not just for themselves but also for their families. For example, my staff, all, ev each and every of my staff every month, they send their parents some money. All my staff have bought land apart from one. So if you're working with me here, you must grow, you must buy land. Why aren't you buying land? Why aren't you building a house? I need you to grow because if you don't grow, you're going to slow us down. Now I have a couple of boys who I believe are ready to get married. Last week I was teaching them how to date a girl. Oh yes, because I don't expect them to go and jump around like, like animals in trying to, to date a girl. You must know how do you approach a woman, how do you talk to them, but also how do you identify a good wife. Because if you don't do that, you're going to get a woman who's going to mess you up. And when you're messed in your home, you're going to come and mess our business up here. You cannot take care of a bird if you cannot take care of yourself. For me, that's my principle. So I train them a lot of things. I've taken them to driving school, some of them, so they can learn how to drive. Uh, two of them, uh, today, they have graduated from a leadership school and they have written books. They are authors. We sent them to Nairobi on a flight to attend a conference uh, to our benefit because what I've seen in, among those two, all the skills they have acquired, I can tell that they have helped our business grow well. One of them actually invented our new formula for the feed out of the training and it's making the company a lot of, a lot of money. Looking ahead to 2024, the firm plans to open another branch, introduce value-added products and continue its mission of sustainable farming practices. Uh, next year we are starting another branch, yeah, because now after five years we should start to expand. So next year we're starting another branch and this branch is going to come from uh, the profitability that we are making, the money that we are making. But one of the things we are venturing into is value addition, including um, powdered eggs. Yes, bathing soap. We can get bathing soap from eggs. We can get fortified foods. We can get snacks from them and so many other things. As you've seen, biogas, water and other things. Uh, we can get uh, uh, repairants, uh, mosquito and other insects repairants. Misenji Poultry Farm has become a learning hub, even attracting trainees from neighboring countries like Kenya. When people hear stories about a project, what goes into their mind is to quickly, you know, be like that project. Because if someone tells you, I'm earning 30 million, you want to earn 30 million immediately. We got to meet a Kenyan trainee who shares his experiences, highlighting the wealth of knowledge available at Misenji. Um, we came specifically to learn about uh, poultry farming. We are in the process of starting our own poultry farm and um, we decided before starting our own we need to learn from the best. Uh, God blessed us, we got, we actually learned of Msingi Farm from YouTube. We were sent a link 
um, with one of our friends to be able to uh, just see how when someone does it right how they do it and with that in mind we said let us go and learn from them so one of our partners um, offered to give us a transport to come and learn from Msingi Farm on how they do the poultry farming. We have really, really learned a lot. There is so, such invaluable information when you get to Msingi Farm. Julius shares insights for aspiring farmers, emphasizing that the biggest capital for any business is the individual. The biggest capital of any business is you. Otherwise, I know a person in this country who once had 11 billion with them and now they have zero. And I'm using this example to let you know that some people think that to do anything you need money. You need knowledge. You need wisdom. You need company for you. You need community for you to actually doing something. And there are three things that my pastor has taught me to be mindful of for me to grow and become better and, and, and grow. And there are three. One, be in the company of people who are better than you. Because you are the average of the five or six people you spend most of your time with. If you spend your time with drunkards, what do you expect? You're going to be a drunkard. Number two, be exposed. You find a person is staying in the same place from January to December for so many years of their lives forever. What are you going to learn? These guys, you've seen them, they came from Kenya. They jumped on a bus, they are here. But you find that there are so many Ugandans out there perhaps that would benefit from this project and they have not made any initiative to actually come here to learn, you know. Those are some of the things. The other thing is, what are you reading? Because for you to learn, you must read great material. You must read books. If you're in poetry, read about poetry. You know, follow some players, some key, you know, leaders in the industry. But that said, how did we start? With 200 birds. We didn't have these cages, you know. We started on the floor. The Bible says that if you cannot be trusted with small things, no one, is going to be trust, no one is going to trust you with bigger things. Well, that's our show for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Join us again next week. We'll have more to share with you. Don't forget to keep the comments coming in. Hashtag NTV Seeds of Gold. Thank you.